Hey, Robert, again, thank you for this awesome barbecue. Hey, thanks. You're, you're welcome. This is always uh, a lot of fun out at Salt Lake. Yeah, I came here last year, and uh, it's, it's like deja vu, you know? Too, uh, too full. <laughs> tell me what. Like five pounds. <laughs> tell me your random thoughts. Uh, I'm tired. <laughs> uh, South by Southwest is finally Warren Scoville out. Man, it's so uh, mega this year, isn't it? It's such a mega thing. But they added uh, almost 2,000 more people, so it's definitely a lot bigger, man. What, what's up with the Fast Company TV? Well, we just started that up a week ago, and uh, we're going to probably when we get back, we're going to start doing a daily show. And we have interviews from MySpace to Microsoft Research to CERN, a tour of CERN, and talks with AMD and all sorts of fun stuff. And we're going to Rackable tomorrow, so. Going where? Rackable. Or Rackspace, I mean. Rackspace in San Antonio? Yeah, so, and plus a bunch of startups in San Antonio as well, so. What's, what else is on your schedule upcoming? Um, uh, let's see, we're going to New York, then we're going to Amsterdam in, in uh, around April 1st, and nice. then we're going to Israel So in, in April, so lots of stuff coming up. And you look tired. You look tired. Well, i got to find some, some time to sleep, man. All right, I'll let you go. I'm, I'm not going to run you into the ground here. So. All right, no, no problem. Thanks. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot. Hey. That was Robert Scoble, the host of this incredible event. And he uh, does this every year, and uh, it's an awesome event. Time during uh, they didn't I, it didn't go down much or not at all during South by Southwest. And I think they deserve definitely you know some recognition there. Yeah. So they no, they I'm have it. Yeah, very cool. Robert, what kind of content are we going to see on uh, Fast Company TV? Well, there's there's two shows. There's uh, Fast Company Live which is done with my uh, Nokia cell phone that I was just showing you. 
um, you know, this kind of thing. And I can interview somebody live, and people can watch that over the internet, right? And they can comment, and the comment shows up on the screen while we're interviewing. So I can start asking questions with the audience, which is really fun. Um, it makes the interviews a lot better, actually. Yeah, is, is that going to have user-generated content also? Well, eventually, because uh, Fast Company Live, I want to get phones in uh, normal people's hands who will you know, bring their own stories about business innovation or tech innovation and put those up on the network. Um, but you're already seeing quick being used by more and more people every day. I mean, I, when it started, I was only one. Now there's hundreds or even thousands of people who have have Nokia phones with a quick, so. Are you going to try to get the Democratic convention? No, I, I, I doubt I can get in there. And the rules for blogging passes there are so stringent. That I, I don't write about politics, so they're. Maybe they'll open it up. I think. Yeah. Would you consider it or not really? I, it might be fun. I, I, I'd like to go. interesting people there. Yeah, I'd like to go. I, uh, Dave Weiner went four years ago, and he had a good time. I, I don't know. I, I'd like to go. I, I, I like hanging around with those people. <laughs> um, maybe. Who else is working on Fast Company besides you? Um, Shell Israel is working on a program. Uh, me and Rocky are working together. And then we're going to have several people who are uh, editorial writers do shows. Because, like, Ellen McGurt is really good on camera. So we're working... We're thinking through some ideas like that. So, what's your video strategy on there? Just using cell phones. And that? No, no. That, so the other show is Scobalizer TV, okay. which we have two uh, really high def cameras, okay. and that are professional, right? Yeah. <laughs> with editors and, and lights and all that fun stuff. Yeah, we went running around with a four thousand dollar Panasonic high def. Yeah. And now I've got, now I've also got this Canon uh, DV20, and nobody can tell the difference. Yeah, you can only tell the difference if you have a huge screen, yeah. and you look at it closely, you know. But uh, 650 bucks, high def. Yeah, it's amazing, and the costs are going to keep coming down. You know, one of the things we saw here was the new red camera, where somebody was had one out in the hallway, and he explained how it's transformed his ability to do movies. Because this this is a a 1080p really high def for movies, yeah. and it costs seventeen thousand dollars, which is a lot of money. But he said that camera three years ago would have cost one hundred fifty thousand dollars and wouldn't be digital, so the workflow would be totally different, right? I went to the Red folks today and I said, look, let's do a fifteen second show, and we'll use your Red camera, and I'll and you let me get on your MacBook and I'll FTP it to my site. So we did a 15 second show today with the red cam and then I FTP'd it up to Austin Cast. Very cool, how did it look? I don't know yet, because it was still FTPing when I left for here. It was taking a long time, the file was huge. Yeah, that's one, one problem with HD is uh, we're shooting on uh, 720p, not, not full, right. not full res. But pretty good res HD. I mean, it still looks beautiful on our big screens, you know. But um, you can't deliver that because uh, an hour of video is like I don't know how many gigs. It's a lot of gigs, and so you can't just you can't distribute that unless you're on BitTorrent, and then you only reach the geeks who have BitTorrent, you know. So. What are you doing, the Charlie Rose show? I don't know. Mike Harrington was on last week, you know. Who was on? Mike Harrington, the TechCrunch. So. Cool. You need to get on there. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we'll see, you know. I, I get to do a lot of fun things, so. I was on NHK TV the other night. So. You were on CNBC, and I followed yeah. that pretty closely. And that's, you know, that whole, uh, the whole setup and the over, kind of the over-amplified things that they're looking for, I thought it was a little much, you know. I don't know if they try to hype all their guests to do that or not, but, you know. They, they do, and they have a producer sort of, you know, giving you that. Okay. Like, you talk too long. It was Danny Deutsch, or is it? Is it yeah, Donnie Deutsch. Donnie Deutsch. What was he like? Did you meet him or get to talk? He was on satellite on the uh, on the West East Coast. And we were out in Las Vegas, so he seemed like a nice guy. He was fun to talk to in between their shots and stuff. So you missed the blog house stuff? Did you do blog house this year? Or well, I went I went to a blog house in Las Vegas. I was still a project employee back then, and I went to the blog house here. So yeah, that, that was fun. Not the same though, right? I mean, when you sponsored it, 
Well, is it the same as when you sponsored it? Or? Yeah. 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 Did you catch where uh, Sarah Lacey, um, Sarah Lacey said that Hugh McLeod kind of gave her uh, tips for interviewing? Did you catch that interview? Yes. Is it good? It was interesting. She said, you know, I spoke to Hugh McLeod before I um, before I went on stage, and he, she, you know, she she brought up Hugh's name in terms of giving her video interviewing tips, and I thought that was interesting. I'll send you the. It, it was in the Austin American Statesman. She's really nice, but I wish she would get a little bit more rapid fire because it's a little hard to watch her. She's very soft. And Jeff Jarvis has an Post on Buzz Machine. Yeah, I, th I thought you linked to it uh, from Francine Hardaway. Oh, okay. But I, read, read his post. It's okay. really, really insightful. I mean, there was uh, about Sarah. Yeah, because he's a journalism professor, right? And he gave her some. You know, he, he's going to use that as a case study for one of his classes. So it'll be. She's working with what? Yeah. Hey, somebody in your panel said that Vidler went down. Is that true? I Vidler didn't... went down or something? Or they, they didn't make it or something? No, no. Bimmy, uh, Bimmy Rever. Oh. Rever. That's what I was at. Rever, yeah. I think they're still a company, but they, they changed their business model because they realized they just weren't competing with the, the other ones out there. There's too many, by the way. I, you know. I mean, there's Dot Sub, which has captions. There's. Uh, Vidler, there's Vimeo, there's Blip, there's, I mean, and then there's YouTube, and the only one that normal people know about is YouTube, right? They don't, what's Blip, you know? Who's going to who's gonna shake out on top in high def? That's going to be an interesting thing to watch. I have no idea, you know? I wish they would get to get, they would start acquiring each other and adding each other's features to one player, you know? Because Vidler has really cool chat, you know, Dot Sub has really cool captioning, you know, Astropix has really cool... Uh, clickable areas in the video, and um, what else is out there? Blip, I, I like their service and their player quality. You know? are, you, are you pushing your stuff to all those places? Not yet, but we will be. Yeah, we'll be using. Um, I, I, there's a tool that lets you push them all. I forget what. I need to know what that tool is. I need to do that. I, I had too little sleep last night. When I'll think about it as soon as you turn the camera. When is He's, YouTube going to up their quality of video? Because they've been rumored to do that. They're testing it, but, but the problem is that if they increase the quality 30%, it makes it really resistant to making a higher quality experience because they're still paying a few cents per gigabyte to distribute that video in, plus you have to have a data center to deal with, you know, if they're full, if they've filled up, you know, uh, a petabyte of video space, then if they up update their, you know, if they make it 30% bigger, that's a lot of hard drives. Are so. you uh, still, Seismic, I, I really don't get, you know, I, I, I just, it hasn't clicked for me at this yeah. point. I, I don't know. You don't find me there very much. I like it because it's conversational, because you can sit there all night and just have these back and forth, like little video chats. And the UI is really nice for looking at things very quickly, because uh, I like clicking through the videos, but uh, I, I need... I, I need some depth to the, my content, and a, a lot of the conversations are like Twitter, but they take a lot longer to consume, right? And um, it's one thing if you're talking to somebody like, you know, a famous politician or a movie star or, you know, a rock sta a star or something, you know. Like, yeah, like if, if I could do that back and forth with Bono all night and we could have 2,000 people interacting with Bono, I think that would be interesting, right? But. Um, just back and forth between me and you. Why aren't we just twittering each other? You know. What What is your in your mind is the killer app right now? Ooh. The one that I I like the best is Quick. But for the normal person, um, all the Office 2.0 apps. You know, Google's Docs and Spreadsheets, Zoho, Zimbra. Um, you know, there's a whole slew of them. I mean, if you search on uh, Google for Office 2. Uh, uh, directory or something like that, you'll find a whole list of 500 different things. And n normal people haven't even scratched into any of those apps yet. And if you do, then you start getting into a lot more collaborative of a world. So. When are you going to get the Riyazi interview? Soon. I think they, 
They got Steve Gilmore back on the bandwagon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always promising, right? Yeah, well, he's friends with Ray, too, but their uh, their stuff is pretty good looking. So their internet strategy seems like it's Makes sense. they they're mo they've moved uh, aircraft here and, and turned it 45 degrees. Which I love the open approach to open standards and embracing all the you know the, the internet standards and making it interoperable. Very smart play for them. And um, you although, know, although the tooling the tooling is going to be where uh, the lock in occurs. Right? Where the lock in occurs. So if you're uh, going to Design a experience for Microsoft's. What is it called? Uh, Star Silverlight. Silverlight. Yeah. Microsoft Silverlight. Um, <laughs> I, that's how tired I am. Right. I, I spent I spent three three days getting brainwashed on Silverlight, and I can't even remember the name. I want to see some quick video of the REM show. I know you're going to be there. Well, I'm going to try. Okay. The uh, they have such strict rules on recording, though. Oh. So. But you never know. So. Uh, what about first time you got kicked out of summer. What about uh, crowdware? Are you bringing? Are you finding lots of people volunteering to help you out? I uh, here and there. Yeah, you did, and I, I. It's just hard to make use of it right now. Pull it together, huh? It's hard to answer my email. I mean, that's. I'm having a tough time. I had to. I had to Skype you, and I like it's like two days between Skypes. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, I usually don't use Skype because I get interrupted so much. Yeah. It's really a, a problem because if I'm going to do an interview every day and be out building business and stuff, I get an hour or two on an email or on the computer, and I'll keep Twitter running because it's interruptive, but I, I can sort of manage that. But Skype is almost like a phone call. It, it right. requires more of an immediate response. Yeah. How much of your time do you spend with people versus on, looking at a screen? I guess depends on the day. Well, here at South by Southwest, the whole, almost entirely is people. Yeah. Um, very little e email. Yeah. Actually, I, I'll get an uh, iPhone email session in, like between meetings or between hallway discussions. Um, I would guess 40% people and 60% on the computer. Some days it'll be 20% people and. 80% or... What are you something. doing on the computer? Gmail? What What else? Gmail, uh, Google Calendar. Um, Rocky uses uh, Final Cut Pro to edit. So I, sometimes I'm uh, in there. Firefox open all day long, you know. Um, either blogging or reading other people's blogs. Google Reader. Um, what do you use for your blog? What blog software? WordPress, WordPress.com. Do you uh, work directly in WordPress? Uh, usually. I've, I've had offline editors and they're really nice, but I have four computers and yeah. and, and I, I also wipe the computers quite often because I'm loading a lot of software and testing them out. Um, yeah, I was using BlogJet for a while, but now I'm back to just editing using WordPress. And, and there's there's tools that you can hot rod your editor on WordPress. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, and Firefox just came out with a new uh, beta four tonight tonight, so. Got to go and try that out. Awesome, man. Yeah. There go all your plugins. Uh, well, I I haven't been using plugins for a while because I've been on on 3.0. So okay, there you go. So you're you're okay then. Yeah. Um, Where are we going after this? Are the cabs going to come pick us up and take us to some destination? The bus has actually finally showed up, so we're going to go. We're going to go to the uh, jig party or the rock band party. So. I went to that uh, party with uh, Veronica and uh, yeah. the the, the uh, you know the geek girl party, the rock band. That was awesome. No, uh, tonight's is going to be even better. We, we, I YouTubed it. Yeah, we have a well, we have a uh, fun video coming out tonight, which actually is already on Valley Wag. So uh, you're going to take us there, right? Yeah. With a bus, yeah. ride the magic bus. Yep. To the to the six six lounge. So. Robert Scoble, man, you're the man. You, you got to go out and circulate. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.